All right, good afternoon. Um, as you will have seen uh, earlier today, we issued a note to correspondents announcing that the Secretary General will travel to Japan next week. On Thursday, December 14th, he will be meeting with Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, as well as with members of the Parliament and Civil Society. The Secretary General will also address the Universal Health Coverage Forum, which is being co-organized by the Government of Japan, the Japan International Cooperation Agency, the World Bank Group, the World Health Organization, UNICEF, and the International Health Partnership for UHC 2030. The Secretary General will also be giving a lecture at Sofia University under the theme Global Challenges, the Role for Human Security, and he's also expected to meet with students. And the Secretary General will be back in New York on the evening of December 14th. Meanwhile, the Under Secretary General for Political Affairs, Jeffrey Feltman, will, be, uh, will visit the Democratic People's Republic of Korea from the 5th to the 8th of December. Mr. Feltman will discuss with DPRK officials issues of mutual interest and concern, and he will also meet with the UN country team and members of the diplomatic corps in Pyongyang, as well as visit UN project sites. While in the region, uh, he will be in, uh, also visit China. In fact, he it was in uh, Beijing uh, today where he met with a number of senior officials. The Deputy Secretary General Amina Mohammed concluded a two-day visit to Cairo where she discussed development related to issues with Egyptian senior officials. During her visit, she met with the Environment Minister, the Minister of Planning and Monitoring and Administrative Reform, the Minister of Investment and International Cooperation, and the Foreign Minister as well as the Secretary General of the Arab League. Discussions with the Egyptian officials covered the Secretary General's vision for reforms at the UN, peace and security architecture, the UN management system, structures, as well as the UN development system. The meetings also reviewed uh, the cooperation between the UN and Egypt on priority economic and development issues. Turning to Yemen, uh, the situation in Yemen, on the situation in Yemen, we find the events unfolding there to be deeply disturbing, with ground clashes and airstrikes having dramatically escalated in Sana'a and surrounding governorates. Initial reports indicate that around 100 people have been killed and hundreds more may be injured. We also have taken note of the reported killing earlier today of former President Ali Abdullah Saleh, as well as several of his associates. It is paramount that civilians are protected, that the wounded are afforded safe access to medical care, and that all sides facilitate life-saving humanitarian access. We remind all parties, the, excuse me, we remind all parties to the conflict that deliberate attacks against civilians and against civilian and medical infrastructure are clear violations of international humanitarian law and may constitute war crimes. Our humanitarian colleagues are receiving desperate calls for help by trapped families, but are unable to reach those who have been injured, and there have been reports of even ambulances coming under attack. We renew our call on all warring parties for an immediate cessation of hostilities in Sana'a, we cannot overemphasize that there is no military solution to the conflict ongoing in Yemen. The United Nations stands ready to facilitate a negotiated political settlement that is inclusive, fair, and sustainable. The humanitarian coordinator for Yemen, Jamie McGoldrick, today called on the parties to the conflict to urgently enable a humanitarian pause tomorrow to allow civilians to leave their homes and seek assistance and protection and to facilitate the movement of aid workers to ensure the continuity of life-saving programs. You will also have seen that yesterday the Secretary General issued a statement in which he said the latest outbreak of violence could not come at a worse time for the Yemeni people who are already caught up in the world's largest humanitarian crisis. Also on a related note, the High Commissioner for Human Rights, Zaid Rad al Hussein, today announced the appointments of a group of eminent experts of, on Yemen established by the Human Rights Council, which he called an important step towards accountability and ending impunity for serious human rights violations committed by all sides. And we have uh, sad news to report from the Central African Republic. Our colleagues there report that one UN peacekeeper from Mauritania was killed this morning in Bria in an attack against a UN police checkpoint at the entrance of a site for internally displaced people. Two other peacekeepers from Mauritania, one from Mauritania and one from Zambia, were wounded in the attack by anti-Balaka fighters. 
The attack took place two hours after peacekeepers intervened to free two displaced persons who were held hostage by anti-Balaka forces in Bria. This is the 14th peacekeeper killed in the line of duty in the Central African Republic this year alone. The Secretary General, of course, condemns this attack and offers condolences to the people and the government of Mauritania, as well as to our colleagues in the peacekeeping mission. He wishes a swift recovery to the injured. The special representative of the Secretary General in the country added that the UN mission will do all it can to make sure that the perpetrators are brought to justice. We do expect a more formal statement shortly. And I, uh, just to be clear, uh, two other peacekeepers from Mauritania were wounded and one from Zambia. So there was one from Mauritania who was killed and three uh, other peacekeepers were injured. Turning to Syria, our humanitarian colleagues there continue to be concerned by the recent escalation in uh, hostilities in eastern Ghouta and Damascus, and Damascus. Yesterday, aerial bombardments on eastern Ghouta reportedly resulted in civilian deaths and injuries, including of women and children. Two cancer patients have reportedly died due to lack of access to medicine and medical care in a besieged enclave. Nearly 400,000 people in the besieged eastern Ghouta which comprises 94% of the total number of besieged uh, people across Syria, across Syria. On November 30th, a UN, the UN called for the urgent medical evacuation of 500 medical cases, including 167 from Eastern Ghouta. Shelling has also been reported over the last days in several residential neighborhoods in Damascus, resulting in several civilian deaths and injuries. We continue to call for safe, independent, and sustained access to all people in need, including the close to 3 million people who live in hard to reach and besieged areas. And uh, turning to Iraq, uh, the Secretary General Special Representative on Sexual Violence in Conflict, Pramila Patton, and the Special Representative for Children in Armed Conflict, Virginia Ngamba, have jointly urged Iraq to reconsider the draft amendments to a law on marriage, which they say are silent on the minimum age of consent to marriage and do not apply to all components of Iraqi society. UN, uh, are you, uh, Ms. Gamba and Ms. Pratt Patton strongly urged the government to reconsider the amendments and reaffirm their commitment to stand with both the government and the people of Iraq to ensure that the scourge of sexual violence is eliminated and that conflict-affected children are protected. The full statement is online. And in Mogadishu, the UN, the African Union, and the Somali government today gathered at a conference to review the progress that has been made in the areas of security sector reform and counterterrorism since the London conference in May of this year. That conference saw the adoption of security pact and endorsement of a political agreement on national security architecture for Somalia. Our colleagues on the ground tell us that the review identified three priority areas for immediate action the implementation of the approved security architecture, the development of a realistic transition plan to transfer responsibility from the AU peacekeepers to Somali security forces, and the continued international support to build the capacity of the country's security forces and institutions. More information online. And uh, also today uh, in Mexico and Puerto Vallarta, the prep meeting for the Global Compact on Migration got underway. At the opening of the conference, uh, Luis Arbor, the Special Representative of the Secretary General for International Migration, stressed that migration demands a global response. The movement of people across borders is, and by definition, an international reality, she said. There is nothing in there that to contradict a state's sovereign right, subject to international and domestic law, to manage who enters and stays within its borders. She added that the success of the Global Compact will rest on maximum countries' political and moral buy-in and willingness to enhance cooperation at the regional and international levels. And in Nairobi, the UN Environment Assembly kicked off today. The event brings together governments, entrepreneurs, and activists to share ideas and commit action to tackle pollution. In his statement to the Assembly, the Secretary General said we already have much of the knowledge and solutions to prevent, mitigate, and manage pollution. However, we continue to pollute our environment. He called this inexcusable and stressed the beating uh, pollution will help reduce poverty, improve health, uh, health, create decent jobs, and address climate change and protect life on Earth and sea. More information online. And today is the International Day, uh, is the International Volunteer Day for Economic and Social Development. 
This year's theme is Volunteers Act First Here and Everywhere. It recognizes the contributions of volunteers at first responders in time of crisis. Volunteers risk their lives every day to care for people affected by conflict, violence, and human, humanitarian crises, driven by the desire to make a difference in the face of human suffering. This year's UN Volunteers Program is partnering with volunteer-involving organizations worldwide, like the International Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies, to help those in need. Tomorrow at 2.30 p.m., you are invited to a panel discussion, Conference Room 7, on discussion on the International Day of Volunteers. And I have spoken enough. I will drink some water and answer your questions. Yes, Edie. Thank you very much, Steph. Um, a couple of questions. First, on um, Mr. Feltman's trip to North Korea. Mm -hmm. um, you said that this was to discuss issues of mutual interest. Could you be a little more specific? And does he plan to meet Kim Jong-un? And is, um, is it one of the issues under discussion, a possible trip by the Secretary General to the DPRK? And on a second issue, um, I, I heard what you said about the meeting on migration mm -hmm. in Mexico. Uh -huh. um, does the Secretary General have any comment on the U U.S. decision to end its participation in the Global Compact on Migration? Thank you. Okay. Um, let me go start with, uh, with DPRK. The visit is a response to a long-standing invitation from the authorities in Pyongyang uh, for policy dialogue uh, with the UN. Uh, we were able to confirm the visit uh, last on Thursday, uh, November 30th. Um, it'll be a wide-ranging uh, discussion. I'm not going to go in into, uh, into any detail, but it will be a wide-ranging policy uh, discussion. Uh, there is, uh, I'll, I'll tell you the meetings that are currently confirmed uh, for Mr. Feldman while he's in uh, Pyongyang. Um, he, that includes the foreign minister, Ri Yong-ho, the vice uh, minister, Pak Myung-guk, and as I mentioned, also meeting with, uh, with diplomatic colleagues and, um, and UN officials. If there are m different meetings that take place, uh, we will confirm it, but at this point, uh, the ones that have outlined uh, are the ones that um, uh, that will take place. And the talking about a possible meeting with the SG? As I said, I think, uh, you know, obviously, as we hope to have more, uh, we hope to have more afterwards. I think Mr. Feldman uh, will be pleased to be able to brief you himself on the visit um, after it uh, after it happens, and on the global compact. on the on the global compact, you know, obviously uh, it's a decision that we regret, uh, but I think there's still plenty of time for U.S. engagement on this issue. Um, but the decision should not disrupt the you know what we see as a clear, unanimous outcome of the New York Declaration for such a global compact which I, I should remind you will be uh, non-legally binding and grounded in international cooperation and respectful of national interest. Um, from where we stand, the, the positive story of migration is clear. It needs to be better told. Equally, the challenges it throws up need to be tackled with more determination and greater international cooperation. Uh, we obviously look forward to the outcome of the discussions of, uh, in Mexico and um, the start of the more formal discussions in, um, in February. Yes, Luke. On the Migration Compact, you said this is a regrettable decision. Is it one you had any warning about? And if so, what was the case the SG made to the United States to dissuade them from this? Uh, I'm not aware that it's uh, one we had any warning, uh, any warning about. Nabil. Ali, sorry. Thank you, Steph. Uh, on Yemen, um, was the UN um, able uh, to independently verify the killing of the uh, former president, Ali Abdullah Saleh? And what do you uh, make of this uh, turn of um, events in Yemen, especially, especially 
uh, the killing of, of Saleh, if confirmed. And I have another question. Can you confirm that the international support group for Lebanon is going to meet uh, this week in, in Paris? And who is going to represent the United Nations? Sure. Let me take the last one first. Uh, the international support group uh, will be meeting in Paris. The deputy secretary general uh, will be representing uh, the UN and speaking on behalf of the secretary general. Um, on the, the events that took place in Sana today, no, we have no independent confirmation. We've seen the press reports. We've seen the photos that are circulating. We've seen the, the, the statements from uh, the GCP itself. But uh, if we have no independent confirmation, though we, we take it uh, that it's happened, but it's not something we're able to confirm. It obviously adds uh, an extreme level of complexity to already a very difficult political situation. It, uh, we have seen uh, extremely worrying rise of violence in, in Sana, as I've mentioned, over the last, uh, over the last few days. Um, this only adds an, another layer of suffering uh, to the people of, of Yemen, uh, especially right now those in Sana, as we said, where civilian infrastructure is being targeted, uh, uh, ambulance are being attacked. Uh, the Secretary General Special Envoy, Ismail Ul Sheikh Ahmed, is currently in Riyadh. Uh, he'd been on a scheduled trip to, to Riyadh, uh, meeting with Saudi officials. Uh, we expect him to be back in Amman tomorrow, and he will be briefing the Security Council in an open session uh, tomorrow via video conference, and I'm sure he will have more to say on the political implications of what has happened. Nizar, yeah, on, on the same ready? subject, um, can you confirm that all uh, UN personnel and uh, relief agencies are safe in Yemen? Because there were some reports that some of them were denied the right to travel or uh, well, we, we are still we're not able to uh, we've not had any flights in and out uh, out of um, of Sana over the last uh, uh, over the last few days the, the the airspace has not been open to human humanitarian uh, human humanitarian flights uh, I cannot uh, give you at this point a, a confirmation that everyone is safe and sound I mean it's a it's an active uh, zone of, uh, of military action that we're seeing in, uh, that we're seeing in Sana. About uh, the uh, inspection and verification, mm -hmm. can you confirm that a team has traveled to Riyadh from the United Nations to discuss with the authorities future relief uh, efforts? No, I'm not able to confirm that. Maggie. Uh, Steph, on Mr. Feltman's trip, uh, when was the last time a, a UN official UN official at his level or higher uh, went there. It seems like it's been an awful long time. It's uh, it's a very valid question. I don't uh, off the top of my head. I don't remember a on the political front uh, that sort of level visit. We can check with other uh, USGs. It's a it's a question. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Stefan, are you concerned uh, regarding the fact that Mr. Uh, the news reports about Mr. Um, Kushner that he is he led uh, foundation funding illegal Israeli settlements? Sorry, that Mr. Kushner. Oh, Kushner. Okay, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Led uh, a foundation that um, uh, funding illegal Israeli settlements. I haven't seen those particular. Uh, I haven't seen that particular report, uh, so I'm, I could be able to comment on it, Mr. Lee, and then Errol. Sure, I wanted to ask you. I think Mr. Pasco went, and with Mr. Kim Wansu. You have a better. You have a All better right. history than. I wanted to ask you about the Deputy Secretary General. Uh, you'd said, you know, she was on this trip to Egypt, mm -hmm. and and so I'm, I'm wondering if you now have readouts of of what took place there, particularly in the in the conflicting accounts of pr possible presidential candidate. Uh, Ahmed Shafiq. Who did you meet with and what was accomplished? Uh, I think I did read out quite a okay. long note on it All just right. now. Okay. Well, then let me ask you something else. You said that she's going to be in, in Paris on, on, on Friday. Uh -huh. um, so I wanted to know, is she, one, is she coming back and then going? And the reason I ask is that there now has been a decision in the Convention of the, for the uh, Trade in Endangered Species. And the, the case of the Rosewood, I think I had the impression from what you'd said that it was, gonna, it was resolved there. Nigeria had responded and all the questions were answered. But in fact, they've ruled that the case continues, and they've said that countries should not rely 
on Nigerian certificate. I can read you the decision if you well, want. I, I, I'm I, sure I have no, I have it, no doubt. Since, no doubt on the right. on the decision. Yes, she is coming back here. She should be back in the office. Uh, she should be back in the <coughs> excuse me <coughs> in the office uh, tomorrow. What I do know is that there is an ongoing dialogue between CITES and the Nigerian uh, authority as for the Deputy Secretary General's role. I think I've answered the, the questions to the best, what I feel is rather exhaustively right. and the clearly to the best of my ability. The well, can you ask her for a comment on the decision? Because the decision clearly implies that the I think certificates the, I think that the, she signed the, I, I'm not sure that that is what it implies. And I think uh, questions having to do with the management of forests uh, in Nigeria uh, rests with the government of Nigeria. The questions are about 4,000 certificates that she signed and whether they no, I, violated I think we've answered, international I think we've answered environmental those, law. We've answered those questions. No, Harold. Thank you, Steph. Um, uh, last week we actually raised that question, but anyhow, uh, does the Secretary General would like to see the leader of uh, North Korea? Does he have that plan, that ambition actually, to put it like that? Uh, given the gravity of the situation, and what about him and other high officials like uh, Deputy Secretary General who are traveling the world, but as we raised that uh, last week, they didn't go, for example, to Myanmar or Yemen or even uh, planning on the highest level to go and open that dialogue with uh, North Korea. And also, it's my understanding that is uh, going to be open discussion on the closing of the ICTY this week. Uh, does the Secretary General will have representation since he's coming back on 14th? And what he does have to say on the closing of the ICTY? I think we'll have a bit more to say on the closing of the ICTY uh, a, bit, uh, a bit later. Um, on the issue of mediation in the DPRK, uh, I think the Secretary General has said it himself best. He said his good officers are always available should all the parties involved uh, requested. He said that over and over again. That remains uh, that remains his position. I think no one here is interested in in, in grand theatrical gesture. We're interested in in substance, uh, uh, and that's uh, the direction in which uh, we are we are moving. Um, well, I think the Secretary General has uh, managed his time well. He has uh, traveled to a number of hotspots. Be including uh, Central African Republic and and Somalia and and Uganda, there have been uh, a number of senior UN officials, uh, humanitarian officials who have gone to Yemen, uh, who have gone to uh, uh, to uh, visit the Rohingyas in uh, in in Bangladesh, and I think we're Secretary General is using his time as judiciously as possible. Yes, sir. And then, yes. Sorry. Sir. Then we'll go back. Sorry. Go ahead. Um, and about Syria. They closed the chemical, chemical weapon last week, I guess, for good. Uh, what's the re result about that an inspection in Syria about a chemical? Well, the, as you know, the mandate of the joint inspection mechanism came to, to an end uh, due to the decisions taken in, uh, in the Security Council. Uh, we continue to feel that the gym did uh, very good work and very important work in terms of accountability. Yes, ma'am. Uh, back to the USG's trip. Mm -hmm. uh, will he be in Pyongyang for the entire time he's in DPRK? And uh, you said it was, and I'm paraphrasing here, it was a response to the longstanding mm -hmm. request for policy discussion. Um, when was that invitation uh, actually extended? And by policy dialogue, is that uh, in reference to Security Council sanctions? Could you be a little bit more specific there? Uh, no, I, I, I will not be more. With all due respect, <laughs> I will not be more specific on uh, on policy dialogue. I think it covers a wide array uh, a wide array of issues. Uh, my understanding is that the invitation was originally extended uh, to Mr. Feldman on the sidelines of the General Assembly back in September, but only confirmed uh, we were able to confirm it only on uh, on the 30th of November of this month. Um, my understanding is that he will remain in the Pyongyang area. Uh, you know, when he visits UN projects, we'll try to get more detail whether or not they're outside of, of, of Pyongyang uh, or if there's air travel involved, but uh, I will try to get those details. Uh, Olga, let's go to people who haven't asked yet. 
Uh, thank you, Stefan. And the follow-up on the brief uh, visit of SG to Japan. Uh, will he visit uh, DPRK with uh, Prime Minister Abe, especially given the fact he is visiting Japan after U.S. No, there, there are no DPRK. plans to for the Secretary General to uh, visit DPRK. No, I'm not asking about the visit. Uh, I'm asking if SG will raise the issue well, of DPRK. I, I, I have no doubt. I have no Abe. doubt that uh, regional issues will come up in the discussions with, uh, with Prime Minister Abe. I would be surprised if they didn't. Maggie, then Luke. Thanks, Steph. Uh, following up to what Ariana just asked, um, is there any possibility Mr. Feltman might go to the North Korean side of the DMZ? Because we always see everybody going to the South Korean side. I, I, no, I, I'm not aware that, uh, that he will. I think the, the, so again, this is really a, a policy discussions, meeting with diplomats and, and UN, uh, UN staff and, uh, and focused on, on Pyongyang. Yes, right behind you. Go ahead. Uh, yes, sir. Um, uh, following up on the uh, Jim uh, response that you have, uh, I believe you said that, uh, paraphrasing that, uh, um, it was important for accountability, but um, the Jim was an investigative mechanism and accountability would require further action by the international community. Of course. So will the Secretary General be recommending that that accountability actually happened now in light of the well, I think there, findings there, there, of the there are, num there are a number of mechanisms already in place, whether through the General Assembly and the Human Rights Council, to look at the issue of, of accountability. And I think the, the, what the Jim found will be an important part of that. Uh, Nizar, then Matthew. Yeah, going back to Yemen, uh, you mentioned last week that three vessels managed to get to Salif and Hodeida. Uh, are there any vessels uh, waiting to be allowed into... Uh, uh, I have, uh, unfortunately, no maritime update to share with you today, but I hope to get one. Do you Matt mean that, that the, the whole issue, the relief effort now has told... No, I just mean I have no update to, sh to share with you. Matthew. Sure, I want to ask you about Cameroon and then about the China Energy Fund Committee. Um, on Cameroon on Friday, you'd said that, that, uh, that the UN is still looking exactly at what the President Paul Bia said. What he said is that basically a, a crackdown in the Anglophone areas, and since that briefing, uh, an order issued telling people to relocate, telling civilians with no uh, relation to, to the standoff that they will be viewed as, as, as secessionists and or terrorists. This issue, this order is public and it's online. Also, a journalist was faced death threats for having testified at a Human Rights Council thing in Geneva about the minorities. So what I wanted to know is have you now, after this time, looked exactly what was said and what is the UN's comment on the president's uh, escalation, escalatory Look, I, comments. I haven't seen the, the order you refer to myself. What is clear is that we continue to urge all parties that have uh, grievances to address those through legal and peaceful dialogue, and we continue to stand ready uh, to, help, uh, to help on that. And obviously, it is important that journalists or anyone who, as a matter of principle, journalists or anyone who speaks to the Human Rights Council be f be able to do so free of any intimidation. Is it, is it, is it uh, legitimate under international law to order civilians out of an area saying that you'll be viewed as a collaborator uh, if you do not leave? This was happening look, in I, I will take a look. I have not yes. seen uh, the specific uh, order. And look. I want to ask you about Patrick Ho, if I could. Why not? Okay. So on, on Friday uh, in federal court, he was held over. Bail was denied based on the seriousness of the charges. Mm -hmm. And since then, you've, you know, you've tried, it, this has been some back and forth on why there's no audit. But it appears that he was put on to something called the UN High Level Advisory Group on Sustainable Transport, was a member of that. I've seen an interview he did uh, in the building with, with UN Radio about presenting that, a report, uh, that report, I believe, in October 2016 to Ban Ki-moon. So it seems like he had a great, much greater UN penetration even than, than Ang Lam Seng did, which triggered an audit. So I'm wondering, has the UN whether audit or not, can it say how many times, for example, one of the issues that came up in the bail hearing is how many times he was in the U.S. in 2017. So have you, has the U.N. determined the extent of, of, of this now indicted briber contacts inside the U.N.? And was he, in fact, on a U.N. high-level advisory group on sustainable transport? I will, check, uh, I will check on that. If I have more to share, I will. Luke? Switching gears to Central America, I'm curious if you could detail any engagement the SG has had on the situation in Honduras over the last eight days. I haven't seen anything. And uh, further to that, does he have any reaction to the protest-related uh, violence that's uh, erupted in the past yes. days? Yes. On uh, Honduras, I can tell you that the Secretary General is following closely the developments in Honduras. He's concerned about the violent incidents uh, that took place in recent days following the um, 
26 November elections, and he appeals for calm and restraint. The Secretary General is aware that the Supreme Electoral Tribunal has concluded the special accounting. The Secretary General hopes that there will be progress in the ongoing consultations between the Supreme Electoral Tribunal and the main political parties, including the opposition uh, Alianza parties, regarding the best way to address the latter's allegations of irregularities in the electoral process, and of course within the constitutional framework and through institutional channels. Has he been in touch with either of the, the, the incumbent president or the opposition leader? Uh, I don't believe the Secretary General himself has been in touch with any of the parties, but obviously uh, we're aware of the, of the situation and other contacts may have taken place. Stefano. Um, yes, um, after two months and a half of the conference uh, here at the headquarters about UN reform, uh, how's it going on that uh, issue also? Because after those last uh, position of the United States, I mean, that he's um, not collaborating, we can say like that, with, uh, with certain, uh, we just saw in the uh, Global Compact on Migration. I mean, is the Secretary General still optimistic about this reform with the back of the United States or, or thinks that things well, cool down? I think the Secretary General would tell you, he said, he, he would tell you he's neither optimistic nor pessimistic, he's realistic. Um, the discussions are ongoing. He regularly meets with groups of ambassadors, PRs, and others to discuss UN reform. This is a, these are big projects, and I think the, the member states want to hear from him. They want to be able to question him, and he's making himself available continuously to regional groups, to committees, uh, all sorts of, of various groupings of, uh, of, of member states. It's an, ongoing, uh, it's an ongoing process. Obviously, decisions will have to be taken by member states. You know, on the issue of the U.S., I think you're, you, you, you may be mixing up, I think, two, two, two issues. One is a decision not to participate in a specific engagement. But the other one, if you look back to September, uh, the presence of the U.S. president alongside the secretary general and you know, more than 100 member states at an event focused on UN reform, on management reform. So we continue to be engaged with the United States and other member states on this particular issue. Thank you. I'll turn you over to Brendan. Any comment on an opposition figure locked up? No. 